You know when you just... Welcome to part two of my Plek video. I've got my Greco back from Tim at MT Guitars and I wanted to talk about the process, what I learnt about it, and most importantly, I want to play the guitar so that you guys can hear it. So if you haven't seen part one of the video, I have linked it in the video description here. To summarise, put the guitar on the plec, discovered that the fingerboard radius was way out, the frets were shot, the nut radius was wrong, and that the machine heads were rubbish. So, the guitar needed a total overhaul. So something that I learnt from this process was that you know, the plec isn't a magic fix. It's a tool to aid a luthier. So the plec is only going to be as good as the luthier you're using it. It's not really the data that it's important. It's about how we interpret it. And luckily, Tim did a great job with this guitar. So, first thing he did was rip the frets off and apply a compound radius. I believe he went 12 to 16 inches on the guitar. And the plec actually does the radius. Now, what we learnt while it was doing that was, instead of coming off in fine sawdust, Fingerboard was coming off in these like scrapes and doing a little bit of digging around, this is Tim who did the digging around, he kind of discovered that this guitar, I thought it was from the late 70s, it's actually from the late 80s and they use a material called Ebonite on the fretboard which is essentially a compressed plastic. So he was freaking out seeing this weird stuff come off the fingerboard, it just turns out that the fingerboard was plastic. So there you go, the more you know. So once the fingerboard had been radiused, Tim pressed the frets in with his jig and put the guitar onto the plec. Now the plec then cut the nut in about three minutes and it perfectly dressed the frets and helped him set the action up. So, yeah. Jesus Christ, man, you've done a good job. It's, um, yeah. Did you ever fiddle on it before you put it in? Uh, it was, it was, yeah, it was a dog. I had to go over and glue all the binding before I even planed it for all those cracks and all that. I had to drop yeah, the links. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, just worried that they were going to thing, so there's should clean up and stuff. But I'd, oh, it's a good sounding guitar. Now it's a good yeah, playing yeah, guitar, yeah, guitar yeah. as well. about the plec is it keeps the neck under tension while you dress the frets which is obviously really important traditionally you've got to get out a straight edge you know level the frets dress them try somehow to simulate string pressure get it all even and then of course you chuck the strings on you get tension and it blows out and you've got this kind of back and forth process that can be really time consuming really frustrating if you're doing it yourself like I've done in the past 
So the plec adds that element of control where it simulates string tension and it means you basically get a perfect setup all over the guitar and this is super low and you know there's no There's no buzzing. It's great. None of my other guitars have an action this low, so I'm going to have to take a bunch of them back to Tim to get them plecked and get them set up properly. The other important distinction to make is that it's not impossible to set up a guitar great without a pleck. Like I said earlier, crappy luthier is still going to do a crappy job with or without a pleck, and a good luthier is still going to do a good job with or without a pleck. What the pleck introduces is that absolute accuracy. And I really like it. I like that kind of integrity measurement that we can get happening there. Most important thing is that when I pick up my guitar, I'm inspired to play. And that's what's happening with this Greco. You know, for a cheap guitar, it's now playing as good as anything I could pull off my wall here. And believe me, I own a lot of guitars. And I've subsequently taken in my PRS Mirror and my PRS Custom 24 to get done. I've also got my main guitar, my PRS SC245 in there. And this guitar already, you know, that guitar plays great already as it is. I was really, really happy with the setup out of the box. It's been looked after and it's been recorded a whole lot. But, you know, can we make it better? That's going to be the subject of video number three. So please stick around for video number three. If you haven't already, press subscribe.